What's up, everybody? Uh, so today, I wanted to talk to you guys about how I organize my baseball cards, let you guys get inside the brain of madness <laughs> that there is in terms of organizing, uh, which if you guys want to unsubscribe after watching this video, I totally understand. Like, I'm pro, you know, you guys unsubscribing because it is like, it's insane the way that I organize. <laughs> Uh, but if there's anything I've learned over 30 years and that my, the way I organize has evolved over the years is that condition is everything. Condition is so important and it's so important that you take your best cards and protect them as best as you possibly can, which I know is very, very difficult because you only have so many supplies uh, that, you know, there's only so many top loaders you have. There's only so many cards that you can send off to get graded because it's expensive to get cards graded. Um, but at the end of the day, grading could be so important. I mean, just give you, just to give you guys an exa a, ri a ridiculous extreme example, the 1993 Derek Jeter SP in a PSA 7 goes for about $250. In a PSA 10, it is sold for as much as $100,000. <laughs> now that is a really, really extreme example, but we're talking about the same exact card in a PSA 7 going for $250 and a PSA 10 going for $100,000. And you see this all the time with vintage cards. And then the problem is like, okay, well, what cards should I protect? You know, like what cards do I put into the binder and what cards do I put into a top loader? Uh, honestly, it's it's almost impossible to know, especially with modern cards. Like for example, I'm <clears throat> not a big football guy, but Tom Brady, uh, he was taken 199th overall. He was taken in the sixth round. He was a compensatory pick. He was supposed to be the backup to Drew Bledsoe. And he's gone on to be literally the greatest quarterback of all time, winning six Super Bowls. And um, you would have never, there's no way you would have ever known. He's not like the, he wasn't a big name prospect when he was drafted. So it's important that even for, you know, rookie cards that of guys that you've never heard of before, that you at least try to take care of those cards. I just watched a video recently with uh, Mike Baseball Collector that pulled a 2011 Topps Update Trout in um, out of a shoebox. And uh, I guarantee you there's thousands of Mike Trout update rookies that are sitting in shoe boxes right now, kind of getting banged around and going from PSA 10s to PSA 6s, which is, I don't know, it's gonna cost you a lot of money <laughs> if you don't take care of your cards. So anyway, so it's about time. I'm gonna let you guys into the madness that is in my brain. So here you go. Here is how I organize my baseball cards. All right, guys, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of base this off of my latest rookie explosion box so within the rookie explosion box there were cards like this that are these are my really like low end cards that i don't think will ever common cards that i don't think will ever be worthy of anything this is like a checklist uh eric king like there's no way eric king is going to come back and become like a great player he's his career is over uh bip roberts so these are all just sort of common cards um that I don't think will ever be valuable. Uh, so even with the common cards, I try to organize them. I'll throw them into a box like this. You know, you can see our 88 Dunruss, like cards like this are never gonna be worth anything. So they're gonna go ahead and be put into like the low end commons. Then I have my sort of higher end commons and that could be your Chrome cards. Uh, that could be, you know, a rookie card from Heritage. These are all <clears throat> these are all guys like David Thompson. I'm not too familiar with these guys. Um, Eric Fetty. Uh, these are guys that you know. Who knows? One day these common cards might be worth something. In which case, I don't want to waste my time going through those common cards. I'd rather like maybe a year from now I'll look through this stack and see if any of these cards are worth anything. But what this does is it saves me time. So like a year from now, if I go through these cards again. I'm not wasting my time going through a bunch of 88 Dunruss cards and looking at, you know, Bip Roberts. And so anyway, so these are my sort of higher end commons. So what I do is I take all my higher end commons and put them into a box that looks like this. Although that Don Mattingly probably belongs in my Don Mattingly collection. So never mind that. Uh, and then we have the binder cards. And I have probably... <laughs> 
close to 20 binders, maybe, maybe less than that, maybe 15 to 20 binders. And that pretty much includes like, you know, your kind of higher ends. So this is like a, like a higher end rookie common, uh, or like an old school, like 83 Dunruss, Jesse Orozco. I guess everyone can kind of have their own opinion about what would go into a binder. Uh, Albert Almora, uh, Robert Osuna, Alex Wood. This is like a refractor, Scott Kingery. So these are all cards that, um, they're going to go into the binder. There, there's a chance that one day they could get top loaded, especially the rookie cards. But basically what I'll do is I'll take all of these cards and throw them into a binder, which I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with. And, uh, got, like I said, a bunch of binders and every once in a while, I'll look at what's in these binders and see if any of them are worthy of moving up a spot into getting into a top loader. And you can see here, lots of rookie cards. Uh, and then of course, star, it's basically star players, rookie cards, refractors, any card that may one day be worthy of moving into a top loader. Then what I do is you got cards that I found worthy enough to be in a top loader. So these are like, you know, star cards, hall of famers, and uh, you see Max Freed, Ozzy Albies, uh, Shane Bieber, Frank Thomas, and uh, they go into here. So this is, <laughs> and I have boxes and boxes. There's a McGuire, let's just take a quick look. McGuire, Byron Buxton, uh, got Chipper Jones, got to have a Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones was this, uh, Corey Seager, got a uh, Trevor Plouffe. <laughs> Generally speaking, I don't take cards out of, like once I put them in the top loader, I don't take them out. <clears throat> I learned that the hard way. Like if you're going to, you know, take cards and then move them back and forth and back and forth, you're going to, you're going to risk damaging the cards. So generally speaking, I don't like once they've made it into a top loader, I, I recommend not really taking them out. Kyle Seeger, uh, is an old school Manny Ramirez. Uh, looks like a Cody Bellinger rookie. Got a uh, Shinsu Chu. It looks like a sort of like a patch or a frame card, number to 499. This is like a reprint, Yastrzemski. Uh, let's see, Hiroki Kuroda, uh, Miguel Cabrera. I guess you guys get the idea, right? Uh, Yon Mancada and another Yon Mancada. So uh, there you have it. And there's like a lot more. <laughs> there's like, oh my goodness. I don't even know where to start. Of course, you got to have the Craig Biggio in there. I've got lots of Craig Biggios. Let's see what's this card. I remember this guy, Brett Lowry, <laughs> auto patch. <laughs> and then, of course, um, so I got like sort of the modern cards and these these cards i'll look into a little bit more often and then you have all the vintage cards that i've top loaded over the over the years and uh you can see here lots of vintage cards that are all in top loaders uh going on and on forever these are all vintage cards all these are vintage and i got boxes and boxes of vintage uh, that I keep, but I try to keep sort of the vintage cards that I've top loaded and the modern cards that I've top loaded into two completely separate uh, boxes, if I can. Then, if they are good enough, if they, it, let's say that they, um, now I've gone through them and I'm like, you know what? They might be PSA worthy. <laughs> so I have, and this is off of the latest Rookie Explosion box. Uh, Lourdes Guriel, this is an auto number to 99. This would be like maybe PSA worthy if he sort of breaks out. He's, he's been, you know, one of those guys that's kind of an interesting player. Then you got a Peter Alonzo. Um, if, if this card is looking nice enough, it might get graded. Then you got the Griffey and a Tony Gwen rookie. But all of these cards are then, uh, cards that might be worthy of submitting to PSA. So just to show you guys some examples and I'll just pull these out randomly. Uh, let me show you guys here. So you got uh, Garrett Cole rookie, Garrett Cole, Alex Bregman, uh, Raphael Devers, 
Devers uh, had a really nice year this year. So, you know, that might be something to, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll submit these cards to PSA one day. Uh, Peter Alonzo, a couple of Acunas, another Acuna. Got a Shane Bieber gold. Uh, Aaron Judge, Reese Hoskins, Bo Bichette. Anyway, so going through the, you know, Judge, Hoskins, Bichette, Otani, Bregman, Trouts, Max Kepler, Kepler, Anthony Rendon, who's uh, kind of an underrated player, Peter Alonzo, Refractor, another Vlad, George Springer, rookie, Aaron Judge. So these are all kind of cards that are sort of, uh, you know, possibly uh, something to consider for PSA. And then... Um, if they are good enough for PSA uh, or BGS, I will send them off for grading. And then they end up in one of these <laughs> boxes here, uh, which I could put the links below on how I got this box. It's pretty cheap, actually, but it's a nice way to hold, uh, you know, if you have any graded cards. And so I've been, um, I just picked up and I'm about to show you guys uh, the Goliath case. So this is sort of my lower end PSA or BGS graded cards or SGC cards. Um, so you can see here, these are all cards that I've gotten graded. Um, and these are, you know, anything that's sort of on the lower end of the PSA cards that I've gotten graded um, will go into here. So just to give you guys some examples, you got Bird, uh, Baez, Rivera, Chris Davis, Ryan Sandberg rookie, George Springer. So these are the cards that um, are going into my sort of lower end BGS PC, PSA kind of stuff. And then if they are sort of the higher end PSA graded stuff, then they go into here. And this is sort of my um, ambition for doing this video was this brand new Goliath case that I just got and again this is a case that I bought at the National and they finally delivered it to me a couple weeks ago and I absolutely love it it is it is uh, actually waterproof um, and uh, it is uh, pretty awesome looking it's actually got a roller on the bottom like so you can kind of roll it along like a suitcase <laughs> but uh, let's take a quick peek inside so push this down push this down and boom Look at that. That is awesome. So I was pretty excited to get my hands on this and it is already jam packed with cards. <laughs> and then I got a couple things here that I don't even know what to do with. But of course you got uh, 1888 cards and then my card here. <laughs> this is the card that I got at the National. Uh, but there you go. Got all, uh, these are like all SGC cards here. Got my uh, custom card here. And then these are just like all of these just kind of jam packed with cards. So you got, uh, you know, the bonds. I'll just kind of, uh, let's take a quick peek at what was in there. So you got, uh, and I'll just, just to give you guys a sample. So I got the bonds traded. Uh, this is the DiMaggio auto. Uh, got the Glaber Torres. Got the Jackie Robinson. Uh, got a Ted Williams. Uh, let's see what else is in here. An Altuve, 2011 Tops update. So it's sort of just jam packed, full of cards. Willie Mays, Billy Repkin. Uh, let's see, pull out a couple other cards. George Munger, uh, just Neil Diaz. <laughs> I don't know why that would be in there, but we got a mantle here. Got uh, Freddie Freeman, rookie card. So kind of like a little bit of everything in here. Got the Derek Jeter uh, Stadium Club, PSA 10. So you guys you guys know the deal. Sort of like the better kind of PSA cards. Uh, Chris Bryant, Miguel Andahar, <laughs> Gr Griffey. So it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you get the point. Uh, it's pretty, just a beautiful, beautiful case. And then of course, there's one step higher than that, <laughs> which is uh, if it's good enough to go into uh, the safety deposit box, uh, which I will once again be putting these cards back into the bank. I uh, just figured I'd give you guys one last peek at these cards because I'm literally taking all these and putting them into my safety deposit box, which holds about, uh, some people have asked me, about, you know, about 25 cards. So I generally pick some of my best cards and take those and 
throw them in the safety deposit box. So anyway, there you have it, guys. That is a peek into my insanity. All the different <laughs> levels from a common card all the way to the Goliath case and then into the safety deposit box. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, and maybe you just want to unsubscribe, which I totally understand. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll talk to you later. Peace.